So uh, Karim will be presenting a paper entitled Bayesian Model Averaging for Mortality Forecasting Using Leave Future Out Validation. Okay, now the floor is yours, Karim. Okay, thank you very much, Hongli. Uh, so thank you very much for attending and uh, I hope you are all doing well in this COVID uh, situation. So this is a joint work with my colleagues from ISFA, uh, Pierre-Olivier Goffard, uh, Stéphane Noisel, and uh, Yaya Sali uh, on mortality forecasting. Um, so I'm currently a postdoc researcher. So before that, uh, I've never worked on mortality forecasting. And when I looked at, at the literature, I found that uh, mortality forecasting in, is in fact subject to several types of uncertainties. Uh, first of all, uh, when you do mortality forecasting, of course, uh, a lot of the literature focus on selecting one specific model. So when you do that, of course, you are subject to model uncertainty. Moreover, when you uh, work in a frequentist uh, framework, uh, usually what you get at the end is one parameter, but um, there is the uncertainty that this parameter is wrong. Uh, so that's also an important point of uh, uh, source of uncertainty. And moreover, um, also mortality forecasting is subject to over dispersion. So for instance, if you fit a simple Likarta model, uh, you will see that often the variance is higher than the mean. So probably that you have to consider uh, over di di a dispersed uh, model. In fact, if, if you look at the literature in mortality forecasting, a lot of uh, papers uh, advocate the Renshaw-Modman model, which is in fact a Likarta model with cohort effect. And it turns out that often this is the best fitting model uh, if, uh, if we look at, for instance, at the quote of, of Curry 2016, but it's not because it's the best fitting model that it's necessarily the best forecasting model. And in fact, when we look at the literature, a lot of uh, model selection is based on the goodness of fit um, criterion. And um, that, that's one problem because goodness of fit criterion, usually you look at how well you fit the past, but it doesn't tell you the ability to forecast the future. So what we propose in this paper um, is to take into account all these uncertainties by considering uh, the following. So for model uncertainty, we'll consider model averaging. So we'll give, we'll not consider only one model, but several models. For parameters uncertainty, we consider a Bayesian framework because in the Bayesian framework, you don't get one parameter, but you have a full distribution for each parameter. And over dispersion, we'll consider it, in fact, simply the over dispersed Poisson which is the negative binomial. And for model selection, that uh, will take into account, uh, will consider a whole of sample validation. So rather than looking at the past, we'll look at uh, recent, uh, the recent past and look how, at how well uh, you, um, you, your, your forecasting uh, performance on the recent past. So more specifically, we, we propose, in fact, two approaches uh, called uh, stacking and pseudo BMA. In fact, these uh, names, uh, stacking and pseudo BMA, come, uh, come from the paper of Yao et al., 2018, where there they consider leave one out framework, but leave one out is not really appropriate for mortality forecasting. So we adapt the leave one out to a leave future out uh, framework. Uh, and importantly, here the weights are based on uh, leave future out validation criterion rather than a goodness of fit criterion. And we'll see in this paper that based on a simulation study, and real data application, in fact, stacking and pseudo BME outperform the standard Bayesian, major, uh, Bayesian uh, model averaging, which is based on uh, marginal likelihood, which is a uh, goodness of fit criterion. So all, all the things that I present today uh, are in fact available in the in R package that we developed called uh, Stanmomo. Uh, you know the reference. So for Bayesian mortality uh, modeling, forecasting and averaging. So there you can fit all the models with one line of code, uh, one line of code and get the model weights. So um, I will briefly explain the, the settings. So we work in a standard uh, log Poisson framework. So you assume that uh, deaths are uh, distributed as a Poisson and you give some dynamics for uh, the log death rates. Here in this paper, we consider five uh, most popular models, uh, namely the Lee Carter, RH, APC, CBD, and M6. Um, and in fact, we do not consider the Poisson, but in fact, we consider the over the dispersed Poisson. Um, so the negative binomial, so you, you add a parameter, phi, 
um, and this phi controls uh, the over dispersion. When phi tends to infinity, you come back to the Poisson. And when phi is, sm uh, is small, in fact, you have more uh, much more variance than, uh, than expectation. So we work in a um, bias uh, framework. So um, you have to specify the likelihood and also the prior. And you are interested, in fact, in the posterior distribution, which is, in fact, the, uh, the likelihood times the prior up to a constant. So in a Bayesian framework, you are interested in uh, simulating, sampling the posterior distribution. And here we consider a Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling. And more specifically, we'll use a STAN, which is a very efficient and fast um, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo sampler which is already implemented in the RSTAN package. So in fact, our STAN mobile package is built on the RSTAN package. So the main question, so we have K models. For each model, we have a Poisson distribution and we want to find the optimal combination, the optimal weights uh, to combine this K uh, distribution. So how, how we do that? So the standard approach in Bayesian, um, Bayesian model averaging is based on the marginal likelihood. So you, you look at the priority of, uh, of a certain model given Y, Y is your data. And uh, so this is uh, given by this expression. And essentially you have um, the, the prior model priorities and another component, which is uh, pi Y given M. So this is the, um, the marginal likelihood that you can estimate with uh, different methods like bridge sampling. The problem with the standard approach, uh, the standard BMA, there are several drawbacks. First of all, it's an in-sample criterion. So it's based on how well you, you feed the past, not how well uh, you forecast the future. Secondly, it's also strongly price sensitive. So when you change slightly your prior, you can have completely different weights. And moreover, it's flawed when the true model is not am among the model candidates. So for instance, if you have a combination of models um, and you try to find the optimal weights, often you will come, you will have a one zero zero weights. And in fact, you will give the full weight to your, to the closer model, to your true model. But in fact, this is not the true model. So there are several drawbacks with the standard approach. So what we propose is two approaches based on leaf future out. So, so what, how, how we do that? So we split the full data in two sets, a training set, and um, so a first training set of the n first m years and a validation set of the last m years where we look at uh, the perf uh, where we look at the performance on this uh, validation set. So for the stacking, we'll maximize a log scoring rule on the validation set. So in fact, so roughly speaking, we look at the performance of the model on the last m years. So we maximize by taking the sum over all ages all years in the validation set, and we try to find the optimal um, combination on the predictive density on this set. For pseudo BMA, it's slightly different. So we agree, uh, we, we look at the AAC type weighting scheme, where in fact, we look at the performance through the, what we call the ERPD. So it's the expected log predictive density. So it's an aggregate measure of the performance of each model. And then we give a higher weight to a specific model if the ELPD is higher. So in fact, the drawback of such approach is that you aggregate the data independently for each model, and then you look at the weights. So in fact, uh, so it's a weight independent, uh, you, uh, you optimize the weight independently, while for stacking, you uh, optimize the weights jointly. So often you have a better performance with uh, stacking. So first question, if you do a simulation study, so first of all, of course, if you simulate from a, let's say an APC model, you would like to recover a high weight, of course, for the APC. So in our simulation study, we will simulate from an APC and look at the, the weights that we obtain and also look at a mixture of models, like a mix of CBD and RH and see what we, what we get. Also, we look at different training, uh, training sets. So because as you know, uh, mortality forecasting is subject, um, I mean, you can have, it's not really robust to the training sets. We consider different training sets. And uh, so we, we look at what we obtain in this case. So for instance, if you simulate from an APC model, that's what we uh, get. Um, so we look in fact that, so in fact, we had 
80 uh, simulation uh, data sets and we look at how often uh, we get one, one specific model. So for instance, here we see that if we simulate from an APC, whatever the training, um, uh, the size of the training data sets for stacking and pseudo BMA, you will recover the um, APC as expected. While for BME, uh, BMA, if you only have 20 or 30 years of data, uh, in fact, you will select the M6 instead of the APC. So that's, uh, that's uh, uh, not a good news for the uh, BMA. So we also look at the combination of CBD and Rancho Abermann. Uh, so in this case, for the stacking and pseudo MBMA, uh, we, we tend to select the APC with, a, uh, with very high priority. While for BMA, um, it's not really clear. It tends to uh, select, um, I mean, it tends to favor uh, M6, um, uh, wh whatever the, the number of calendar years. So now if you look at the mean absolute error for the combination of CBD Rancho Abermann, uh, so in the circles, it's the APC. And uh, if the cross is the M6, so which is selected by the BMA. And overall, we see that the APC uh, does uh, better performance um, overall uh, compared to the M6. So uh, essentially, it means that the APC appears as the leading model. And this is uh, the model which is selected by the stacking of pseudo BMA um, in this uh, situation where we have a mix of uh, mortality models. In the second part of the paper, we also look, of course, at um, uh, different uh, the, the weights that we can obtain for different countries. Uh, here we consider France, uh, UK, USA, and Japan. Um, and we looked at the performance through uh, different assessments. We look at prediction intervals, uh, survival priority, and mean absolute error on the older data. Um, yeah, so maybe I will. So, in fact, in the BMA, of course, you don't have validation. So, you have a part of fitting and then prediction where we look at uh, the prediction performance. Where for stacking up to the BMA, you have to first, um, you have to first split between fitting and validation. Um, and then in the second part, then we look at the uh, prediction uh, performance. So, so here we look, so we look at 10 years uh, ahead uh, prediction performance. So essentially that's the, the weights that we obtain. So overall stacking tends to, uh, I will look for the time remaining. Well, I cannot see the chat. Right. Um, <clears throat> So for stacking, we tend to select two or three models, while for BMA and pseudo BMA, only one. BMA tends to select either RH or M6, which is uh, consistent with the literature because usually when you uh, do um, selection based on AIC or BIC, you will tend to select either RH or M7, uh, as, you, as you know. Um, and so while here for stacking, we see that Rather than only choosing, for instance, Rancho Abermann, um, he, he proposed to make uh, to to mix Rancho Abermann with Ricard or any PC, for instance, for France, um, and so on. So we looked at the performance uh, on the forecast death rates. So in green is the stacking, and then black is the BMA. So overall, uh, we see that stacking tends to provide uh, narrower uh, credi uh, credible intervals. Um, I, I, I would say <clears throat> sometimes also the, the observed uh, death rates are outside the credible uh, intervals. So the two observations is first that probably that the mortality models do not provide uh, sufficient uncertainty, even though we are in the Bayesian framework. So that's uh, one point to uh, consider. Um, and secondly, um, we, we do see some, some better performance of stacking in the sense that we can have all the points in 10 years ahead within uh, the credible intervals overall, except for maybe the United States. So we also look at the survival priority. So overall, this is uh, consistent with the previous graph. So overall, the stacking provides uh, a bit narrower um, credible intervals. Um, we see that, for instance, for un unfortunately for the UK, either we use BMA or stacking um, tends to be outside, uh, almost outside after 10 years. 
uh, we see that in Japan, even, even though it's outside in the first years, in the, in the first years, it's perfectly uh, in the middle um, uh, after, uh, after 10 years. So that's a good point for uh, stacking. And we see that sometimes, for instance, in Japan, the uncertainty of uh, the BMA tends to be uh, uh, quite large. Uh, and here, a good point for, uh, for stacking, if you look at the mean absolute error on the last 10 years, uh, and we compare the, the performance, we see in green uh, the stacking, and we see a, a, clear, a clear out, um, we clearly see that stacking outperform um, uh, BMA, um, BMA and pseudo BMA. So we see that for any ages, especially for the United States and France, for United Kingdom, it's almost uh, the same performance for any age, but we see a, a better performance in the old ages between 80 and 90. For Japan, it's not really clear. Um, there is no clear conclusion, but then we have also take the, the mean over all ages and we, uh, we found uh, it's documented in the paper that we have better performance overall also for uh, the stacking. And very briefly, we'll also look at uh, what, what, what we can obtain from um, a COVID type effect. So here in black, uh, black circles is the standard leak character. And then we uh, perturb slightly the data with uh, two years of lower mortality compensated by one year of higher mortality to see how it impacts the weights and uh, the uncertainty. So overall, we see that such perturbation uh, ten, uh, increases the the credible intervals, the uncertainty, which is uh, uh, what we would expect. Um, something um, a bit str strange is that for the BME, which uh, selects the Rancho Abelman, we see a, a very high uncertainty in the confidence inter interval and even decreasing trend. And uh, we looked uh, more closely and we, we found that there is some erratic behavior in the, um, in the cohort effect and in fact, it's uh, uh, consistent with the literature. Uh, there is some literature on the, the erratic behavior of the court effect in the range of man, while the APC provides some uh, more consistent, uh, uh, coherent um, uh, gamma parameter. So overall, if, if uh, the, the main conclusion of this paper is, first of all, we have consider a setting that takes into account several types of um, so a, sor a source of, of risk. First of all, the overall dispersion through negative binomial, the model and parameter uncertainty uh, through the Bayesian, uh, Bayesian model averaging framework. On the simulation study, we, we found some good news for uh, stacking and pseudo -MMA. In the case, the model is well specified, like an APC. We found that for stacking and pseudo -MMA, it gives a high weight to APC as expected, while BMA tends to select even another model uh, for tw 20 and 30 years of training data. Um, in, in case the model is misspecified, uh, stacking and uh, pseudo BMA, uh, we have found that they have a better uh, predictive accuracy. When we mix CBD and Ranch Rabberman, stacking and pseudo BMA does a better job. And using data of four countries, we, we overall found that stacking achieves an overall better uh, predictive accuracy than pseudo BMA and BMA. When we look at the mean absolute error, stacking tends to, to do a much better job. So it means that uh, rather than only choosing the Rancho Abelman, you can do a better job by mixing, uh, by doing a mix of a Rancho Abelman, early Carter, and an APC, for, for, for example. So overall, we recommend uh, stacking. So as I've said at the beginning, everything is um, uh, implemented in the, in the R package stand momo. Um, so you can install the package through one line, uh, one line of code, install packages in R. Uh, you can, if you have a matrix of death and matrix of exposure, uh, you can uh, have a Bayesian uh, Likar to fit with a one line uh, command and you will have all, uh, all the forecasting, um, all, the, all, all the posterior distribution for all your parameters. Uh, you'll have forecasting log death rates or what you need. Um, and of course, we have also implemented the RH, APC, CBD, and M6. And once you have fitted the model, you can uh, directly have the, the weights of stacking and pseudo -MMA through the uh, mortality weights uh, command. So we, um, so very, very simple. So if you want more information on the, 
on the package, here is the link. Uh, we also included functions to download the mortality data from HMD, uh, functions to for simulation study, for convergence analysis. Uh, everything is on the on the web page. So thank you for your attention, and the paper is available now, uh, available on the archive. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Karim, for the very interesting presentation. So now we are ready to take questions. We have about five minutes, so we can take a few questions. So, uh, so far, there is no question from the audience. Yeah, so I'd like to take a chance to, you know, rec suggest the audience to ask their questions during the presentation. So uh, otherwise, we, we don't have an esti estimate of, you know, how many questions there will be, uh, you know, for, for a talk, right? Okay, anyways, so uh, is there any question from the speakers? Um, okay, um, if not, then, then maybe I can ask a question. So, I mean, overall, this paper is very well written. It's, it's very clear. So, actually, I don't have any question regarding the technical, you know, parts. So, what I was wondering is a more general, you know, extension. So, um, you know, uh, is this kind of, well, is this kind of uh, method, you know, uh, extendable to a multiple population? context because I guess in that case you have to modify your you know negative binomial model etc cetera, etc cetera, right but is there a way to cope with it uh, yeah that's a, a very interesting question in fact the uh, the general approach of uh, choosing the weight so stacking a pseudo BMA uh, is in fact quite general once once you have the let's say the, the, the likelihood of each model. I mean, once you know the full distribution of each model, uh, the stacking can, can, be, uh, can be used. So in fact, what, what you need as an input is the, um, uh, the performance for each model in terms of log likelihood. So once, in fact, the stacking and pseudo VMA is a quite general approach that you can also apply to a multi-population. Um, that could be a very interesting uh, extension of the framework. Um, well, I, I can I, I cannot say uh, in advance what would be the result, but uh, that would be a very nice uh, uh, application. Uh, yeah, definitely, thank you. Yes, yes, yeah. Because I think the result of this paper is already quite nice. But uh, what I was thinking very, you know, a very impulsive, you know, thought is that for maybe for smaller populations, there there will be like larger model uncertainty, and there will probably be a higher need for Bayesian model averaging, right? So if you look at, for example, if you look at a very big, you know, uh, country like US, like you have uh, 300 million population. I mean, it, of course you still need model averaging, but the, the data are more stable and more less noisy. So um, that that's, that's one thing, right? But if you look at a small uh, like insurance portfolios or a very small, you know, national population, then probably model risk may might even be higher and for those smaller population it might make sense to use some sort of multi-population model to 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 help the prediction and, and modeling right uh, but, but anyway this is just a very rough thought yeah thank you very much um yeah yeah i have some discussion with uh different people and they say that uh well may, maybe the the, the BMA weights uh, can be quite different if you consider a uh, small or large uh, um, exposure country. So um, that, it, well, I, I would say that here from the, the observation, we, we, we do see different kind of behavior, for instance, like the United States or even Japan. And I, I think it could be, for I, I will try to check uh, because, well, it's very quickly done in the, in the R package. To see what what kind of weights uh, uh, I get if I if I consider a, a small country, a very small country, to maybe they will be, uh, they will have a better performance. Uh, in in this situation, for instance, uh, uh, I found that like for instance in in Japan the behavior was quite different from other countries. Uh, so th that there there is maybe uh, some research to be done on, on that side. So um, definitely. Thank you for your uh, remarks. Thank you. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, uh, for your response. Okay. So